All right, well, I figured it's about time I actually try to turn on the new computer here. So I've done a couple things. I have it here on the bench with the cover off. Uh, first thing I did is uh, the CMOS battery. I thought it's 20 years old, so I took the old one out and I replaced it with the new, with the new one. And uh, funny thing is, I it's just, just a CR2032, so just a pretty you know, run-of-the-mill battery. I measured the existing one, the one that was in the computer, and it still reads a nice strong 3 volts. But I had plenty of new ones, so I decided to put it in anyways. The motherboard is actually made by Micronix, which was a very respected motherboard manufacturer. I also took out the hard drive, not for any reason other than just to look at it. Um, definitely Western Digital Caviar, January 97, so that kind of lends credence to the entire build of this computer being in uh, February 1997. Uh, 3.1 gigabytes, so just as it was said on one of the labels somewhere, that's what this is. The reason why I really took it out is I needed to unplug it. To take out the hard drive on this computer, you basically have to remove the front panel, which is right here. The way you do that on these particular cases, these were very common cases used by a lot of manufacturers. The front bezel is on here. You basically have to just push these little tabs here 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 these this one this one and this one and then it flips off and essentially it hooks on to the front so you can remove that pretty easily but once you do that there are two screws that go on the hard drive through the front of the case basically the hard drive sits like this so there's a screw on each one of these holes and once you remove that you can slide it out and I really wanted to disconnect the power and there's really no way to do it without pulling the hard drive out it's the, the power cord is tucked in there I also unplugged the power from the floppy, the zip drive, and the CD-ROM drive, and I unplugged the IDE cable from the CD drive just so I could unplug the cable from the motherboard. And the reason why is I want to plug the power cord to the computer in with a little bit of safety margin of having nothing connected to it just in case this thing explodes or does something weird. So let's do that right now. Let's plug it in. And here's the moment of truth. Remember, nothing's connected to the power supply, so it's just the thing. 115 volts. All right, no strange sounds, and basically the capacitor is charged up because the light dimmed for a second. So that's a really good sign. So I'm gonna I'm gonna unplug this, reconnect the motherboard. All right, so I'm gonna plug the power cord to the motherboard back in. All right, that's in. I still have the power disconnected. I'm going to plug this monitor, my workbench screen, into the computer. I have a VGA cable. All right, so at this point I have this monitor here connected through VGA to the computer. I do have a keyboard here connected, the PS2 keyboard, no mouse, and none of the internal uh, things are connected. The drives, all the drives are disconnected, so it's just the motherboard, whatever cards are connected, and the power supply. So let's plug the power cord into the power supply. I saw the light stem slightly as the capacitor is charged up, that's normal. And then the power switch is recessed. It is the top of the two. Here we go. We got fans, we got power light. There it is, Phoenix BIOS 405. All right, there we go. So, real-time clock error. Ooh, I'm not surprised. System battery is dead. Replace or and run setup. Well, that's interesting. I just put a brand new battery in. EDO memory, 65 megabytes. Pentium R with MMX 200. So this definitely has the upgraded processor and the extra RAM. Let's check out the setup. Let me bring the keyboard down. Checksum is invalid, of course, because I took the battery out. All right, so this is looking correct. I mean, obviously there's no floppy drive. Let's just set the time and date. I'm having trouble here. Oh, I see how this works. So it's 10. <laughs> is this a Y2K compliant BIOS? I hope so. This was obviously made before then. Today is, I think, the 30th. And we are 2016. Good, it worked. Time, I don't really care right now. Let's see, everything looks good. Let's see, COM ports A and B enabled, parallel ports enabled, integrated PCI. 
This has a weird... It does not operate like the normal <laughs> screen. There we go, use the space bar. DRAM, non-parity, remember that? Sound card? Plug and play OS. Well, it is actually because it's the Windows 95. Select DOS if you have DOS. Select other if you have a different operating system. Well, we're using DOS, right? Because it's Windows. Passwords. That doesn't matter. Power. APM enabled. Power management. All right, this was the very early days of power management. Oh, mouse wake up event. So you can allow the mouse to wake it up and you can set different IRQs to wake the system up too. Ooh, these just the old days of IRQs. It kind of brings back fuzzy fuzzy feelings. Boot sequence. Well, there's really nothing connected. I do like numlock on. Save changes. Yes, and enter enter to reboot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the power and we're going to hope that the BIOS battery stays charge or basically the BIOS configuration is retained drive error of course it's not connected uh, let's see I have one to resume no error about the battery okay that's that's okay let's re hit the control alt delete looks good I'm gonna reconnect the peripherals All right, let's plug this stuff back in first I'm gonna pull the power Hit the power switch. Got a little blip out of everything there just to discharge the capacitors. And now we just have this fancy caviar drive. I, would you like some caviar by any chance? We're going to connect to the caviar to the computer. Now this particular case has, of course, another 5 and a quarter inch bay right here, and it does have another three and a half inch hard drive bay here. Ah, there's actually room for another three and a half inch here, and there's an exposed front. So you know what? I might want to put another floppy drive. I think I have another three and a half inch drive. I can always put a second drive in. I mean, is there a really reason to do that? Not really, but can I do it? Sure. I wouldn't mind getting a five and a quarter inch drive though. And they don't give us a cable that can accept a five and a quarter inch drive. It needs the slot type. But I think I have a cable like that. But this might be something I'd go and buy off eBay. Anyhow, everything is reconnected. But I'm going to reconnect the mouse. Well, connect it for the first time here. Because we are probably about to boot into Windows. Which means we definitely want to have mouse abilities to see what is going to happen. So I'm going to keep the case open. That way we can make sure nothing goes wrong. It smells great. It absolutely smells brand new. You can hear that hard drive. Making it, making it sounds. Bring down the keyboard here. I can set the rest of the BIOS options up here. So let's set the date correctly. The time currently is 7.44 p.m. Okay, IDE automatic. 3.1 gigabytes. Remember that, how you had to do that? Ooh, ooh, multi-sector mode enabled. Fast PIO, yes. Doing multi-sector transfers you know, made a huge difference with transfer speeds. Of course, 32-bit IO really helps as well. I can't adjust anything else on here. I guess you can probably do manual, but we'll leave it on auto. If anyone remember, if anyone's used PCs back in the old days, you remember that this the types, you have type 1, type 2. Some of the old original hard drives for the PC, like the Seagate ST251 was a type 1 or a type 2 drive. I, don't, I really don't remember the exact details like that. But if you would you go to type 1 here, 21 megabytes, and there's the sectors and you know, cylinders and all this stuff. I'm pretty sure this was the ST251 used to type 2. And all that really did is configure these particular settings here. Back in the old days, hard drives didn't contain information about their physical characteristics. You actually had to set that manually. 
when we save and I hit enter twice, it should maybe boot into Windows if the hard drive is working. Definitely sounds healthy. Let's see what happens. We'll get the RAM check. The floppy drive did its little seek. So I oh, wait, look at that. Whoa! It's booting! Microsoft Plus! And this does look weird because we are in the wrong aspect ratio. Let's fix that here. Wow, listen to that. There we go. Aspect, one to one. No, that's not what I want. Hmm. If you can hear that hard drive seeking, I don't know if that's quite normal. If this hard drive is dead, I am not too broken up about it. It is booting. Ah, look at that! Oh, and it's... This is the setup wizard for Windows 95. Okay, so we're in the setup wizard for Windows 95. This computer looks like it has never been used before, as it was claimed by the seller. So I am definitely using a 101 key keyboard, although I have Windows keys on here. So isn't that a 104? But maybe with Windows 95, it didn't really understand that. This is rather exciting. I'm sorry all you can hear is a super loud fan noise. Ooh, enter your user information. Adrian Black. License agreement? Sure, I accept. Should I read this? Nah. Next. What? Enter your certificate of authority. All right. Jump cut. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. And I have my Windows 95. So obviously it's looking for this particular number here because it has OEM in the middle. So let's type that in. 24696-0014673-45390. Excellent. Type a name to identify yourself to Windows. Enter a password if you want to. Let's just put in my name again. Gosh, and we will not put a password in. Confirm you have no password. Done. Definitely high security. I'm really, you know, worried about the hackers, the Windows 95 hackers. As if. Yeah, so th this is absolutely doing the setup from the first time. This is going to have incorrect information for when daylight saving starts and it ends because since 1997 or 95 we've had changes in the you know start and end time so that will be interesting. But currently the time is correct and uh, I guess I can't hit apply because it's already the correct setting. Configuring Windows messaging. This is exciting. I haven't used Windows 95 in probably since about 97 because I didn't really I, I think I used Windows 98 a little while oh, you must install a printer before you can print really I don't have a printer so I'm gonna hit cancel so I pretty much went from Windows 95 right to Windows 98 and then right to Windows 2000 I didn't bother with the whole Windows Millennium Edition and all that garbage Windows 95 Wow, the office toolbar. Who remembers this garbage? Oh, wow, I forgot how much I hate that thing. Schedule a scan disk. Okay, fine. So one thing that's weird is I don't think this thing is running in high color mode. Oh, it is. Look at that. 640 by 40. Let's crank it up to 1024 by 768 thinking yes it worked look at that I absolutely just forgot how flat and crappy Windows 95 looks although it's pretty interesting because it does seem pretty zippy online services AT&T WorldNet AOL internet free trial CSI computer it was CompuServe set up Wow from CompuServe about these online services. Oh, look at that old font. Remember this one? Isn't this called Tacoma? 
Yeah, this office toolbar, I always hated this thing. Well, there we go. Uh, let's see if the CD-ROM works. Let me eject the CD. Eject. CD-ROM opened, no problem. Can I reject it or close it? Nope. Let me push the button up here. Ooh, it zips right in, no problem. Oh boy, Micron, look at that. They have two hard drive partitions. That is so rude. Two gigabytes on the C drive, and then there's a, a useless E drive that has nothing on it. This is just dumb. So you put everything on your C drive, it fills up, but you still have another gigabyte just sitting there doing nothing. And it's not like you could repartition your hard drives. Ah, oh, look at that. Look how sluggish uh, this, this moves around. I mean, look at this. Remember this? This computer does have hardware acceleration. Let's let's push it to the max, and let's go and change it to true color mode, 24 bit. Oh wow, we have to restart. How about let's try applying without restarting? Windows will now adjust the settings. Well, it did it. So yeah, there is hardware acceleration because look at this. It's able to move the window around without the slow redrawing that was so common in the mid-90s. You ever used a Macintosh? For a long time, Macintoshes didn't have hardware acceleration. And boy, were they slow. When you did graphical, you know, intensive things, and here's an example, we go here, and you can scroll through this list and see actually... Yes, while we're not getting, like, V-Sync on this, and the movement's definitely tearing and whatever... Let's do a detailed list. Yeah, at least, you know, from a scrolling perspective, even Windows 95 could actually scroll relatively fast. And does anyone know what the actual plus pack is? So let's see here. Photoshop Deluxe is already installed. Let's run that. Remember the multitasking of Windows, the old versions? Not so great. On my own. Open special, new photo. Yeah, this is kind of like, wow. If you recognize this user interface element here is definitely like a Windows 3.1 element. It's not using the new API. So there's, what is this? Is it, this program is horrible. There's no, there's no toolbar. Old photo, Where, where's the way I can paint? I guess it's like a very stripped down version of Photoshop. It does support layers though. Guided activities. Touch up photos. Wow. Just look at how this looks. It's just amazing. I've really forgotten how how Windows 95 rendered stuff. But hey, it's, it's definitely a, a blast from the past. The AW32 control panel. I really need to hook up hook up something to this thing. Look at this. Yes. Yes, this is so cool. I, I, I had an AW32 for a while, but then I was a Gravis ultrasound kind of guy. Quicken number five. Quicken five is on here. Parsons Technology, family lawyer for Windows. Here's the various online services. Wow, from CompuServe. This will install Wow. I really don't want to install Wow. Netscape. Hey, Eudora. Light is on here. I used to use Eudora. Oops. Ooh, look at that. It crashed. Wow. This program has performed an illegal operation. Page fault. MS phone. Nice. The computer seems to be working fine, but the Microsoft phone application is a piece of junk. Ah, oh, look at this. Previous version of phone is still running. Please quit. This is how cruddy Windows was. We're going to restart the computer. That would be pretty funny to put a solid state hard drive in here. Is that even possible, I wonder? I suppose if I got like a PCI SATA controller and disabled the onboard IDE, that, that might be possible to actually run a solid state drive on this. Imagine how fast this thing might be. Although, I don't know.
I'm gonna run the internet. Oh, I can't open a web page. Yes, because I'm not dialed into the internet right now, and with no Ethernet card, I can't easily connect this. Internet Explorer 3.0. So what I wanted to see here is if we if we can get to device manager. Is that something I can get to? And here we are. Pentium, 64 megs of RAM. Let's look at performance tab. We're in 32-bit mode. Fancy. Graphics. Hardware acceleration. Full. Virtual memory. We're letting Windows manage that, of course. File system. CD-ROM. Quad speed or higher. I don't really know how fast this CD-ROM drive is. But I was looking for the device manager. So we got a TIAC CD512E as the CD-ROM drive in this computer. I think we can turn on DMA maybe. I wonder about that. Maybe that'll speed things up a little bit. We have the generic NEC floppy. And then we have these two hard drives. Genetic, I guess one is the one is gonna be the I don't even know how to tell which is which. 40 and 80. Who knows? We're going to turn DMA on for both of these. I seem to recall this trick did speed things up. Ah, this is the, this is the zip disk because it's removable with the insert notification. And floppy disk. There's really no settings here, just removable. All right, Diamond Stealth 3D 2000. This is still an S3 Verge chipset. There's the date. Nice and modern. Let's look at the driver versions. Stealth 3D. Yeah, so it, it is using. It's diamond drivers, but it's an S3 Verge chip on there. Hard disk controllers. This is the P the bus mastering. I just leave this stuff alone. No settings to do in in here. Keyboard. I keep trying to use the scroll wheel, which doesn't exist. There's our Supra modem, 336, 33.6k modem, ASVD. If I, if I recall, that had something to do with the voice stuff. Monitors plug and play. Yeah, of course it's not detecting this 23-inch 1080p Dell monitor. I'm not surprised about that. PS2 mouse. And we do not have a network, adap network adapter except for a dial-up adapter. There are those sound cards. Here's what I was looking for. Okay, so we got the Creative Advanced Wavetable Synthesis for R32. So this is what enables the wavetable stuff to replace the MIDI. Because I think when you have a Sound Blaster 16 or R32 plug and play card as we do in this computer, this is built into the motherboard, you get OPL sound, which I personally love actually. So I don't really love this R32. I might actually remove this card entirely from this computer. This doesn't really give me anything. I prefer to have the fallback Sound Blaster sound. And let's do a quick check of the advanced system devices. So we got lots of drivers working here. Nothing looks out of place. Oh, it's going to ask to reboot because I, I did alter a few settings. And let's just see. My documents. Remember, this was before we had user folders. Yeah, that's it. So this is a totally virgin computer. Booted for the first time today. But the initial imaging of this disk was 2-18-1997. Command com is from 96. And here's auto exec bat was modified today on 2016. And the Microsoft network it would be kind of funny actually to see if I dialed in, if I said sign me up. Oh yeah, this is awesome. I got to get this computer on the network and I have to click sign me up to MSN but use my existing connection. <laughs> to see what happens. Is it going to say, I'm sorry, that's not possible anymore. We'll leave that for now. Oh, I remember the old days. Look at these wallpapers. You can pick stuff in it. You have two options. You can have it in the center, which is that. Or you can hit dial, and it gives you that. And, of course, the icons still have the old desktop color, which is so ugly. And look at these nasty, nasty wallpapers. This was the old day, the old days when... There just wasn't a lot of aesthetics. That was not a high priority. <laughs> That's with, with operating systems of the time. Yeah, I don't even know which one I would use here. These are all super horrific. I think I will go back to the forest one. 
And if you're really going to be tricky, you go here and you try to change your background of your icons to something like a forest green. So now at least the icons sort of match this wallpaper you're looking at. Sort of. Anyways, Windows 95. Welcome to the 90s. I'm glad this computer's working. I was a little tenuous getting booted up. I still haven't touched the monitor. I'm afraid that there might be bad capacitors. But this one seems to be holding on without any issues. So maybe the monitor will be fine as well. But thumbs up. This thing is working great. So if you find any of this interesting, give me a thumbs up. There'll be more videos on this computer. You can be sure of that. Thanks for watching. Bye.